Hi everyone, I hope you're all okay. Um, for those of you who are at work, um, it's really, really important that you're still gathering your evidence for your portfolios. Um, some of you finish this year, some of you finish next year, um, but it's really, really important that you don't take your foot off the gas. Okay, we need we need that sort of evidence coming in quite frequently. Now I can't come out and see you, unfortunately, at the minute. As soon as I can, then I will be doing. Um, so it's up to you really to be gathering your own evidence. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd do a video today showing you how easy it is to video yourself whilst you're doing some work. Um, something personally I've never done before, but I think it's going to be fairly simple. Just to explain where we're up to, um, I'm at my mum and dad's um, house who's, who's having quite a lot of building work, some refurb done. Um, so over the last um, three days, I've, I've installed sort of 50 square meters of this oak flooring throughout the house. This is looking quite good, quite nice. So uh, I've then next got to put all the skirting board on down here, down here, um, all the way through the hallway, all the way through here. Um, so that's what I'm going to be on with next. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to start in the back room here um, and I need to put some architrave around this door frame. Okay, now there were two double doors um, on here um, with the architrave and stuff, but the architrave sat back behind the plaster like that. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put a plant on piece on some architrave and I'm going to talk you through and show you how I'm going to do that. So as you can see, this, this frame must be 25, 30 years old easily. Um, you can see it's got all the paint. The issue is when you've got paint and you're trying to put timber, new timber, new mouldings, whatever it might be, onto something that's existing, that's got loads of paint, then it doesn't really sort of join correctly. It looks a bit nasty, to be honest with you, not very neat. The only second fix is you want to be as neat as you can, because it's seen at the end of the day. So it needs to be really neat, looks really nice. So, whereas you can see there, you've got gaps and stuff, doesn't quite look great. There's a piece of the wood there, which I've taken the paint off, and all I've done is use a scrape to take it off. Nice and easy. And as you can see, it lines up dead nice, dead neat. It's gonna be flush, which is what you want. Paint's been taken off the frame now. Okay, so that's gonna give us a nice clean sort of edge to put our timber up to, our mouldings and what have you. Okay, so all I used to do that was was a little scraper. I think Harris made them. I think they're only about eight pounds off screw fix. Um, but they've got interchangeable blades. You can take the blades off, put a new one in when they go dull. Um, they're really good bits of kit. Um, really easy to use. It's a lot cleaner, although there's a lot of dust. You can see there, I've swept all the dust up. Um, there's quite a bit there. Um, if you were to use nitromorse or something like that, then it'd be really, really messy inside, especially when you've got new carpet, new wooden flooring. Okay, that's why I've put protection down, okay? Just remember in the MVQ, you need to evidence that you've been able to protect um, the work area, okay, from damage whilst you're undertaking work. Okay, so really, really important that you can evidence that for me. The next stage we need to do, okay, unfortunately, because this has been plastered, Okay, it's an old frame, it's set back. The plaster's now um, sat in front of the door frame. Okay, so the issue you've got with that is that if we were to put our architrave straight up to um, that plaster and up to the frame, as you can see, you're gonna have a gap. Okay, if you were to tilt it that way, you're gonna have a gap down the back edge. All right, so there's two ways you can combat that. I mean, you can put a fillet piece in, which is gonna fit in between there, which is going to look nice and neat. Okay, that's what we're going to do here today. The other way you can do it, if you have a look at that in the shaded area, um, you could cut that out and that does a rebate. Okay, and that'll rebate over the, over the plaster. The only issue with that is when you come to put your skirting board up to it, your skirting board will come past. Okay, so that's the next stage, dead easy. All you need to do is find an average gap Okay, go a little bit bigger if you need to. You can always cork down the back of the architrave. Okay, so go around your frame, 
find a nice even gap and then get on the table saw, rip some pieces down and then you can fix them on. Okay, so now we've cut our fillet pieces, okay? I had an average of nine mil around here. Um, it's important that that fillet sort of stays the same size going all the way around. Um, and that way then it'll look even on the frame when you look at it. If there's a little bit of a gap behind the arc shave, it can always be caulked. Um, so I think it looks better that way if it's even on the frame. Um, what we now need to do is we need to fix these on. Now these have been cut and planed up um but it's important that when we fix these on we don't fix them to the edge okay like that what happen is when that's that's painted um it doesn't matter if, if you fill it or or what um but you'll always end up seeing a gap through the paint so what we do is we put what we call a quirk on it okay which is where you step it back similar to what you would do your architrave um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark these out i'm going to cut them to length I'll glue and pin them, okay? It's always important as well that we use like a wood PVA glue um, to bond the, the timber together um, when we fix it and then we'll fix it with a second fixed pin gun. Um, but we put a quirk on that and then a quirk on the architrave and then that'll look nice and neat. Okay, to mark the quirk, all we're gonna do is use a combination square, so I've set this to five mil Okay, and then all we're going to do is place it on, pencil mark, pencil mark, pencil mark, all the way around the frame, every 300mm or so. And then that's going to give us reference points to fix our plants on feet. The plant on piece is now on, they're fixed, as you can see. It going all the way around, you can see what I mean by the little quirk. So it's created a little step in there, and it looks a lot neater than trying to join two pieces of timber like that, especially when you've got one that's old, one that's new. Um, if they were both plain really nice, then it might not work, but it's a, it's a safer bet to do it that way. Um, but more importantly, what you can see is there now the architrave sits a lot nicer on the frame and to the wall. You can see there's no gaps. Okay, so that, that was the desired effect. That's what we wanted. What I've then done as well, I've also marked our quirk again, all the way around. So now the architrave is gonna sit to that line and it's gonna create like a little double step effect. Okay, really nice. So what we can now do is, with these reference points, we can now mark our architrave. So I've cut them roughly to length. There's three lengths there, one for the head, two for the legs. Um, it's a Taurus architrave and it's primed. Um, and it's MDF. Okay, you tend to find now a lot of the time you're using MDF skirting board, uh, MDF architrave. So, so you can see what I've just done there. I've put the architrave in place where we want it, up against the floor, so we want it right against the floor. And then all I've done is lifted it up and then marked it off that reference point and then I know exactly where we need to cut it. It'll be perfect. So we're gonna do all our cuts on the chop saw. Okay, so it's really, really important that it's set up correctly. So you can see in this instance that I've got mine on a chop saw stand. Okay, that makes it really, really easy to use. It means that the work pieces are fully supported all the way around. So when we've got our arc shave on there, we're ready to cut, it's held on both ends. Okay, you're not going to try and hold it up by hand while you're cutting, which can be potentially quite dangerous. Okay, you see a lot of people just putting a chop saw on the floor and then putting little bits of wood um, to support the piece and that and it's not ideal okay plus you're up and down up and down on your knees all the time and it's not great so if you can have your chop saw set up um really sort of well and efficiently then it's going to make your work a lot more efficient you can also see as well that we've got dust extraction okay or local exhaust ventilation lev that's also important as well because that's going to take away a lot of dust okay and stop you reading it in Once all your pieces are cut, there's two ways of going about fixing it now onto your frame. So, 
one way is picking up every individual piece and then fix it to the frame glue and pin it to the frame as you normally would the other way of doing it is line it on the floor just like that and then you can fix the top two corners together and then you can lift it up in one full piece so that's the method we're going to try now So now all the frames fixed together, the architrave, okay, all I've then done is gone round and quickly just put a quick bead of PVA glue, PVA wood glue onto the timber, the plant on, and then onto the wall I put a bit of grit fill, and what that's going to do is that's going to hold it nice and tight. What it'll also do is as well, because it's going in in one big sort of piece, that grit fill will help to grip it whilst you uh, fix it in place, so you shouldn't need another set of hands to help you. Okay, so that's it, all finished. Okay, so as you can see there, you can see the double step, that double quirk. Okay, it looks a lot neater than trying to join two pieces of timber. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful. Um, let me know what you think. Um, like I said, it, it, for me, that was really easy trying to film it. Although, yeah, I've got a GoPro and um, I've got a couple of little tripods and what have you, which has made it a little bit easier. You know, even if you've got someone at work to film you, or even if you propped your phone up, get a little tripod for your phone okay it's dead easy um if you've got any issues at all please give me a ring drop me an email if you've completed any knowledge questions send them over to me if you've got any practical evidence again send it over to me all right um also if any of you have returned to work okay and haven't let me know yet then i really need to know that it's really important that you let me know um other than that please stay safe um and i'll see you see you very soon